You know, recently, uh, seven African countries uh, decided to go to go and put a call for peace to Ukraine and to Russia. And we raised a number of issues. Uh, Zambia was represented, Comoros was represented, uh, Republic of Congo was represented, Senegal was represented, Uganda, uh, as well as South Africa. So we were all represented, and Egypt as well. So we were all at one, that even as we were going to address an issue of the war which has had a negative impact on the African continent, which is the rise in prices for food, rise in prices for fertilizers, we were clear that we are not going there as beggars. We are not going to ask for a favor to both Ukraine and Russia. We were going there to say, open up the Black Sea Channel so that the, sea, uh, the, the, the grains and the fertilizers should go into the world market. So we were not on a begging mission, even as we are in great need as a continent and all that. That should go to demonstrate that Africa is, should never be seen as a continent that needs generosity. We want to be treated as equals. Even in the multilateral institutions, we want to be treated as equals. And if our equity is at a low ebb, there must be ways in which that can be addressed. To us, this is very important. Our sovereignty is one of the things that we hold on dearly to. And we demonstrated that very clearly to both President Zelensky and to President Putin when it came to this issue. Even as there were suggestions that, yes, we can donate this, we can donate that, we said, we want you to release these grains and fertilizers to the world market so that the world can trade in these commodities and other issues we can handle in a different way. I wanted to make that point so that it should be understood where Africa has evolved up to. We want to be key players on the world stage, want to be key players even in the financial uh, markets and uh, in the MDBs. Now, these are the positive things. I do, Mr. Uh, President Macron, want us to address another issue which to us is a bit of a negative. Uh, you will have heard President Sisi talking about the 100 billion that was promised in Paris. President Sassou yesterday as well also spoke about it at the dinner. Now there is that issue that a number of the commitments that have been made have not really been fully lived up to. But before I get into details, let me immediately say that we recognize the many initiatives that have been put on the table, and a number of countries here have done so. Germany has gone out of the way to put a number of initiatives, and the U.S. has also done a number of things. But there have been times when we felt like we were beggars. I played a key role as chair of uh, the African Union during the COVID period. We felt like we were beggars when it came to vaccine availability. When we felt we needed access to vaccines and the Northern Hemisphere countries had bought all the vaccines in the world and they were hogging them and they didn't want to release them at the time when we needed them most. And we felt like we were begging. And at times it felt like they would just be droppings from the table, that yes, we will give you that and that. And let me tell you something that, that generated a lot of resentment. We, we, we resented that and it got worse when we said we want to manufacture our own vaccine. 
And when we went to the WTO, there was a lot of resistance, enormous resistance. And we kept saying, what is more important, life or profits by your big pharmaceutical companies? And that too, I must tell you now, generated and deepened that disappointment and resentment on our part because we felt like life in the Northern Hemisphere is much more important than life in the Global South. And these are issues that need to be addressed. And I'm glad that we are all seated here like this because we've got to get to the heart of these matters and address them. Now, I come to promises that have been made. And Chancellor Schultz was saying, Schultz was saying, we, we've got to walk the talk. Yes, we want to see the talk being walked. President Sassoon Gwesu yesterday said at the dinner, a hundred billion dollars was promised per year. And he was saying, I've never seen that. And many of us will testify that that hundred billion dollars has, has never really been made available. And this should stand out as something that needs to be addressed. Because sometimes we sit at conferences like this and say, yes, we'll make this available, this available, and we believe you. We believe you, but now the tire must hit the tar. We must now see action flowing from that. Now, I want to then talk about something very practical. President Sassoon Gwesu raised it yesterday. He said he would be happy if flowing from this summit, we do something very practical on the infrastructure side. Having said that 600 million people in Africa do not have electricity, and yet we've got all the resources to generate electricity, particularly the mighty Congo River, and that there have been plans to build a number of power stations that will generate, in my calculation, up to 70,000 megawatts. And he said, and I want to speak in support of this proposal, that to prove that these summits are not summits where we just talk, flowing from the Paris uh, COP as well as others. Let us now put money on the table and collectively say we are going to address this mega project. A mega project which will in the end generate electricity for up to 12, 15 African countries all at one go. And this is a project that I think the multilateral development banks here working together, the call that you've made, President Macron, can actually fund. And where, as we rise from this, we should be able to say the Inga Dam is now going to be developed into the Inga power station, the one that President Sasson Gwesus mentioned, and the next one as well. If we can do that, then we as Africans will now be convinced that these summits are really meaningful. We will now go home and say, you know what, it's worthwhile going to these summits, coming to Europe, and to listen to all the promises because they are willing to act on the promises. This is what President Macron, I believe, will be one of the most important outcomes. The reform of the financial architecture, as well as a practical project, infrastructure project that is going to uh, add a lot of value. President Sisi and I have been talking about a, a, a railway from Cape Town to Cairo for years. We will leave that for the next uh, summit, but the one on generating electricity and building uh, power stations on the Inga Dam is 
the most important, that is immediate, that I believe needs to be addressed now. Let's get that done, and then we will be convinced that you are serious with the promises that you make. Thank you very much, uh, President Macron. Uh, let me start off by saying, uh, President Lula, don't worry. When we have the BRICS meeting, the issue of currency is top on the agenda. So we are going to discuss it. President Macron, I just want to start off on a very positive note in terms of what I think is evolving here. I think there is consensus that is clearly embraced by everyone that we need to address climate and poverty uh, because they go together, there's an excess. And as it were, we need to burn the candle on both sides. So that's important, so that's agreed. And we all recognize and accept that we need capital at scale to address the key challenges that many countries in the world face, particularly the developing economy countries. And we also would be agreed that there needs to be more cooperation and coordination between your development banks, multilateral development banks and the private sector. Uh, there needs to be coordination so that there is no fragmentation which you kept talking about. But I think what is important to many of us is that there should be solid consensus on the reform of the financial architecture of the world. Because without that reform, the dreams and the objectives that we have to address our challenges will not be realized. And that ref those reforms need to touch on a whole range of issues. Mr. Mo Ibrahim yesterday even spoke about something that we may think is insignificant, that the boards of directors of your multilateral institutions are not made up of independent directors. They are largely internal people or shareholders. So that in itself, for us, is an important reform. Uh, we also need to look at the distribution of the special drawing rights. Uh, I, I find it a bit difficult to be told that this is set in the rules and it will forever be like that and that it's either you get zero or you get 34 billion. In our view, this is not a zero-sum game. It's a game where we all need to be dealt with with equity uh, in an equitable manner. And there is a need for reform in that regard as well. And the other important thing for this to happen, uh, it will help us not to participate as unequal cousins in these institutions. It will help us to participate fully and uh, so that we don't have a sense that we are beggars, that we are being dealt with uh, out of generosity. I think it's important in the new era that the world is in now that uh, there should be a good measure of equality amongst sovereign nations. Thank you.